And welcome back. It's now nine minutes away from seven o'clock, and I promised before the break, we have been joined by internist Dr. Fernando Cuellar to talk about obesity and what it means for our health. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me once again, William and Marlene, first for the air. Yes. And to talk about such a fun topic, right? Of course. Yes. The battle of the <laughs> bulge. I always get people a little bit worked up. <laughs> well, you know, uh, we don't all necessarily like to hear about it, but it is definitely of concern. Right. This is really following up on several things. Um, we had the uh, Ministry of Health provide uh, their data on 2015, and one of the things that has definitely been standing out is the state of obesity in the country, yeah. um, specifically the central region, which was the where the study was done. And it is a global issue at this point in time, becoming a top priority for most health organizations. So let's start off with a basic definition. Um, it's not just about looking big. It's not about the numbers on the scale. How do you define overweight and obesity? obesity. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point to, to jump off from um, mm -hmm. Marlene because obesity is not just a matter of perception. You can look on somebody and say, well, I think you're obese. You actually have to do certain measurements yeah. um, to determine that. And I will first like to say that what you said was quite right that it's becoming a, a, a main topic now because obesity is now considered a disease, mm -hmm. a public health disease. We didn't have it uh, in that category before. We never used to talk about it much before. We used to shy away from it. Um, I even could remember 10, 15 years ago, you tell somebody they're obese, they get offended. You could tell them they're fat <laughs> and they're fluffy, <laughs> but to tell them that they're obese was to almost insult them. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sensing a more acceptance of the term obese and and people who come into the office i have a chart on the, at the door and the wall and they would say um, they would ask for their numbers and to determine themselves they're obese mm -hmm. now that's the definition of obesity is determined by your weight and your height okay of course like somebody said to me two days ago well belize should have its own numbers and not depend on <laughs> on the numbers from the <laughs> caucasians Mm. or from what is established otherwise because the numbers are different and in, in doing these type of discussions on television like this you, you, you get into the newer research and China and Japan for example they have their own their numbers separate from what is generally accepted worldwide okay they are so big mm -hmm. that they have now determined that their numbers are slightly different okay. um, the Chinese and the Japanese no, on, no other country has done that yeah. no other part of the world has done that but it's, again, depending on your height and your weight. You know, and we call it your body mass index. So they would weigh you, they would measure you. There's a calculation that you do and to determine a number. Okay? Yeah. That number is usually um, in the 20s, the 25 and under. Um, they have different classifications, really, but the WHO, the World Health Organization, um, has set the standard where uh, between 18 or 18.5 to 25 body mass index is a normal weight. Mm -hmm. Below 18.5, you're underweight, and above 25, you're overweight. Between 25 and 30, you're overweight, and above 30, you're obese. And again, there's a different categories of obesity, one, two, and three. Hmm. Now, what does this mean in terms of your health? Is it uh, something that you should immediately you know, uh, start worrying that you're in peril? Of course, because obesity affects every single part of your body, okay? From your skin, to your heart, to your brain. One of the US thing that they have actually tried to put emphasis on, it leads to cancer, something that we didn't have any idea much of because there are certain cancers that are linked to obesity, particularly of the digestive system, cancer of the pancreas, colorectal cancer, esophageal cancer. So people who are obese tend to get more cancers. And of course, the usual things that you hear, strokes, heart attack, that kind of thing, but it affects every system of your body. Be before we move into the health issue, I want to I talk about some of the very common uh, 
information or excuses we may say when we hear about overweight and obesity and i want to point out a bit of this study i think uh the ministry of health said six out of ten um from their target population were either overweight or obese yeah. um and that, that is very significant definitely um and that was only on one particular population it hasn't been extended uh countrywide but we hear people talk about fluffy we talk, hear people chunky. talk about chunky, thick, um, and that big is... Big boned. And normal, <laughs> yeah, big boned was... But the two things that we hear as an excuse most often is that, well, I'm naturally big boned. Genetics. Or I come from a big family, right. so naturally I'll be big. Right. What is the truth behind either of these? Can a person be big boned? Let's start there. Yes, people have big structures, big frames, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But that's not an excuse to be obese. Um, I get that often, and that's a good point. That like I, my whole family big, my mom, my pa, my sister, my brother, all are we fat, so I should be fat too. That's not entirely true. Mm -hmm. Okay, you do have a genetic predisposition to to be obese, to be fat, but that's not the the, the, the only thing that makes you fat. There's a lot of environmental factor, meaning diet and lack of exercise. But if you are six foot seven, you should weigh so much. If you are five foot seven, you should weigh so much. So it goes right back to not making an excuse that your family is big. That's why you should be big. So the big bone structure actually underscores why the proper way to tell if you're over, overweight exactly. or obese is your body mass index. Exactly. Because if you're taller... Um, if you're taller, naturally you'll weigh more, but to a certain extent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can be six foot and weigh 400 pounds yeah. you're obese i mean we see that for example in nfl players the the, the, the professional f football players they're tall but they're also obese mm -hmm. and you wonder how, how they get around and do the type of activities that they do now and you can go deeper into numbers because i, I think that the argument there would be what is the muscle mass that you have versus fat. what is the fat index yeah. that you have yeah. That's even more detailed, but yeah. the BMI, the body mass index, is a screen. Mm -hmm. It's a general screen, and I think we should stop there because that's that's enough to digest. Yeah. That's enough yeah. to get over. We're talking about your abdominal circumference, talking about your your fat composition, mm -hmm. those are refined, those yeah. are refined um, characteristics that you would talk about when it comes to fitness. But yeah. when it comes to health, yeah. it's your BMI. Now. Women have proven to be uh, more uh, at risk for becoming overweight and obese. Why is this? Hormonal, mm -hmm. the estrogens, there's a, there's a link to that. Um, but that's a good point because I get that often at the office. Women will ask, does your chart that says BMI is uniform for male and female? And I always think about it, why don't we have a little bit difference? But in no place that I looked at, you actually have that differentiation between uh, males and females, mm -hmm. or age for that matter, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let, let's break that down a little bit more in terms of the BMI. How do you uh, calculate it um, in the first place? Because some people jump on the scale and they have, in their mind's eye, an ideal Target, weight. I yeah. want to weigh 170 pounds. Right. Um, is that where it ends? No, no, there's a mathematical calculation. Mm -hmm. We have it easy now that we have charts. Yeah. Okay, so we can, we can look at a chart and say, well, you're five foot six and you weigh 200 pounds, mm -hmm. then we can classify you. But you can actually do the numbers. Your weight is usually measured in kilograms, something that we're not yeah. used to in Belize. We, we do weight in pounds, but mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a calculation for the pounds part. But Internationally, we do the kilograms. So we do the kilograms, okay, and we do the height in meters. We usually say in Belize, five foot six, five foot seven, but in other places internationally, you would say you are one meter, uh, 60 centimeter high, mm -hmm. um, tall, no? So you put the, the, um, the number at the top, the kilograms, and then you put the, the, the centimeters at the bottom. Then you square the centimeters at the bottom, that mathematical parentheses squared, yeah. And then you divide it, and then you come to the, the number. That's that will take but you. Better out. you just use the chart. Exactly. You can look it up online yeah. and, and 
There are some uh, places where you can go in and get a reading of your BMI rather right. than jumping on a scale at home. Exactly. Um, which can help, or your doctor can because also assist you. Because it automatically measures you and it weighs you at the same time and it gives you the readout. No? But um, charts are, you have charts on pens, on, yeah. on desktop things, it's, it's widely available. So, so let's talk about, <laughs> I, I want to go to one of the most important points uh, because we talked about uh, whether or not your genetic structure has led you to becoming overweight or obese. But in your professional opinion, what are some of the reasons that we in Belize are facing this issue of obesity? Eating habits and lack of exercise. That's across the board. We eat, we eat ourselves to death. <laughs> we eat ourselves to get sick mm -hmm. and we don't do enough activity. So the nutrition part, I mean, I guess I will even elaborate on that later today. I think Miss Robin coming yeah. in, that was talked about. But I think those are the basic, yeah. basic issues. No? So it's uh, what we're eating and how much we move. Exactly. Now, this is one of the things that we hear in pretty much all conditions that we talk about. We talk to, uh, to the Diabetes Association, the Kidney Association, the Cancer Society, and they're talking about eating right and exercising more. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say if you were to have your own way in terms of uh, being a part of the, the policy making uh, structure in this country? What would you say are some of the things that the, we as Belizeans just need to cut from our diet? Rice and flour, two big starches. Mm -hmm. um, we need also to have a handle on our sodas that we, we think so. I guess the Coca-Cola people now like hear that, that maybe their sales would disappear. But they themselves are doing uh, diet sodas and, and these types of things. But that's, that's the fight not only in Belize, all over the world. Yeah. Um, fast food, the burgers and all of that. But um, Like chicken. Yeah. One of the challenges I hear a lot in the office is people have this impression that it's more costly to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure if we have enough data to see exactly how much, um, I think there is, and, and I'm sure that Robin can mention this, that what's the cause of a healthy breakfast, uh, what's the cause of a healthy lunch, of a healthy snack, and compared to $2 tacos and $3 meat pie and, and that kind of thing, yeah? okay? Mm -hmm. So, but people think it's because of the fruits and the vegetables that are involved, that it's more costly to eat healthy. Um, I hear that a lot from housewives. I know housewives have a good handle on how much it costs to feed a family. Yeah. And they, they think it's more costly. And going back to your policy, then we should make the, the, the stuff then more affordable, more accessible for people to get yeah. it. No? And maybe tax and care of the cost of the other stuff. Um, well, legislation has been tried in other places, but yeah. people yeah. talk about infringement on right. their rights. Yeah. Remember New York had the they big about the... The, the big, big soda. soda. Big there was the big soda. There was also uh, there have also been attempts in terms of banning trans fat exactly. in uh, inclusion in recipes, both in restaurants mm -hmm. and products. And it's because these things are proven to be unhealthy for us. But, but if we were to go back to to the issue of obesity and the impact on our health, you kept on mentioning abdominal circumference. Let's, let's be real, it's belly fat. <laughs> All of us, uh, and it's one of the hardest areas to lose weight from. But why is this pinpointed as one of the areas of concern when it comes to persons who are overweight and obese? Yeah, that's a very good point, Marlene. The simple reason that the belly fat is a different type of worse fat than fat from the rest of your body. The abdominal fat is worse than the fat, for example, around your thighs or in your hands or in your neck, mm -hmm. for that matter. Okay, it has different ingredients that makes you more ill. So that's why it's pinpointed as a worse indicator. For, 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 um, for poor health. And what are some I, of the things that it makes you prone to? Heart disease, strokes, pretty much. Mm. Now, I, I want to take it in another direction because uh, very often uh, we're talking about adults and their concerns, but we've not touched obesity mm. in children, children, which is becoming a huge challenge yeah. globally, uh, where we see children uh, yeah. and the eating habits and everything starting very early. Yeah. Why is it something that we should be concerned about when it comes to children? Yeah. And not say that, oh, that baby fat, oh, yes. get rid of it. I, I think we start with the, with the culture part. Remember, yeah. I have been practicing for more than 20 years in Belize, and I can remember 20 years ago, oh, big, bouncing, fat baby. And you have that impression yeah. that that's healthy. healthy. Yeah. Okay. 
and we know that's not the case now. So I think a culture change has to happen first or alongside the actual looking at it in children, in school children and that kind of thing. So um, that will take a little bit more time. It's changing slowly, but I think the culture part was, oh, the healthier the baby. Um, I mean, the fatter the baby, the healthier the baby. Curiously, I was also, <laughs> in the articles they talk about obesity in adults, obesity in, in children, and obesity in pets. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, they connect all the dots now that people who are obese have more obese pets too. <laughs> Well, that it shows your way. activity level. Yeah. I, I would imagine that's immediately what would so, come to mind as a dog. You owner. won't take the dog to walk if you don't want to yeah, walk. So yeah. They talk about dogs and cats. I didn't hear any other type of pets, but definitely uh. they are <laughs> obese dogs and obese cats. Now, but, but it is concerning that yeah. we're facing a society that children are having issues of overweight and obesity yeah. um, because all the risk factors that we have as adults, they now have at a much younger age. There was a study done, I believe, oh, it's been a while, um, with diabetes type 2 in mm -hmm. children and you were finding children that were pre-diabetic and actually uh, developing type 2 diabetes at a young age. And what if the, the schools can, can monitor what the children take to school? Like, yeah. I, I, I know of one school that encourages healthy snacks healthy to be taken. Healthy snacks, yeah. Um, they but use what's the on the lunch courage. menu for them? Well, that's the with, thing. I mean, uh, schools throughout, yeah. yeah. So let, let them enforce that, yeah. that the cafeterias have to strictly sell healthy food get rid of, and this might sound a little bit um, draconian, they call it, that fancy word, um, to get rid of all the benders around the school that go to sell. And some schools have already done that. that. Well, I've had that conversation at least, several times at least with Ministry some of Health. Away yeah. from the schools yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and can I just say, because I've spoken to some people from schools about that, and they say it's, it's a constant fight. The children yeah. aren't allowed, they're not allowed to come into the yard, but they put their hands through the gate. Yeah. And it's it's public. Well, it's public domain. You it's can be municipalities that have to help enforce that. Twenty meters away from the school compound. Then. So health effects. Um, I think we, we should really talk about that. So, in terms of the the cardiac problem, the heart problem, um, how do you explain how overweight and obesity um, help puts a strain on your heart? It seems straightforward, but not everybody understands the the um, the links. Yeah. Well. It, it depends on the amount of fat mass you, has, you have, sorry, mm -hmm. which is one part, and the fat cells themselves, mm -hmm. okay, have different substances that they secrete into your body that makes you more ill, that you makes you more develop heart disease before. So it's not only mm -hmm. the amount, but the actual fat cell themselves do harm. So mm -hmm. that's why it would lead to a high incidence of heart attacks and strokes. Mm -hmm. And that is as simple as I can put it. Because yeah. you, do, you do have certain chemicals that are secreted a lot. So it's not just your heart is working harder because no, you're no, bigger. No, no, It leads to, for example, the, 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 the plaque build up in your arteries mm -hmm. is accelerated, goes faster. So if you have your, your arteries getting narrowed at age 70, then it starts getting narrowed from age 40 and 45. So by 50, 60, you're already having uh, heart disease and strokes. Mm. And uh, how the link is made with cancer? Yes, the link is made for the same chemicals that are produced. And that's a, a, a real new concept. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see that coming uh, 15 years ago. But um, there are definitely established studies that show that people who are obese have a high incidence of, of cancers. And of course, that makes it a, even a bigger argument yeah. that we should address obesity. Now, one of the issues I want to um, address is You've been talking about some of the causes, uh, the overeating and not being active enough. But in some um, corn corners, they also talk about not getting enough sleep. Yeah. Why is that an important yeah. consideration? Yeah, that's a, that's a vicious circle because when you're obese, you tend to suffer from sleep disorders too. Yeah. So that will lead to sleep problems, which lead to more obesity. So it's a circle there. But people who have a sleep problem will have, again, different hormones, different chemicals in their body all messed up and will lead to eating disorder and lack of energy so they don't feel that drive to exercise. Hmm. So there's a link between sleep and obesity, both ways. Obese people suffer from sleep disorders and people who are sleep disorder tend to be more obese. What do we do with this information? Because I think a big part of the challenge for most people is uh, how do you make 
the changes uh, besides starving yourself. Some people immediately they think, okay, I'm yeah. obese. The first thing I need to do is to go on a strict diet and perhaps do some starvation since there's enough uh, food there uh, stored. I think it's an individual responsibility, William. I mean, no amount of education and government policies and institutional policies will, will change. You have to take that, that responsibility on yourself to, to make those changes. Um, I usually tell people that because you hear this, I want dead from something sometime. Oh, yeah. And so, what the heck? But that's not the case. People who suffer strokes, who have kidney disease, who have heart attacks, who are incapacitated, um, do suffer their quality of life. And not only them, their, their family members mm -hmm. take a beating. No? I mean, there's not enough income in the family, nobody to take care of them. Um, so it's, it's selfish, actually, to, to not take care of yourself and become a burden to your family members. Yeah. So we do see, and, and the, the cost of uh, care as well, um, and that's where the public health system comes in. We know the predisposition, if you are obese or overweight, with diabetes, hypertension, uh, all the things that we typically um, talk about, even the high cholesterols mm -hmm. and triglycerides. But there are also other conditions right. in, that affect your mobility. Exactly. A couple points I want to think. The cause of obesity, I mean, we don't have the numbers in Belize, but in the U.S., for example, are pretty much between 20 to $30 billion a year. That's a huge, a huge number. Um, the other thing I was checking is that the insurance companies now, um, they have taken up their premiums um, based on your BMI. Mm. Okay? So it's more expensive to get insurance if you're overweight or obese. And that's another thing that is forcing people mm -hmm. <laughs> to take care of themselves. I noticed certain companies are penalizing their, um, their employees um, for being obese mm -hmm. because it costs the company more. Um, so they're encouraging slash uh, penalizing them. Uh, it's controversial because there was just a resolution passed that some areas of the world are considering obesity as an incapacity, just like how you have somebody without a foot or sight or something yeah. there thinking that um, and should, you should not quote unquote discriminate against obese people. Yeah. Um, I love I, that you touched on that because that was one of the issues I wanted to touch on. We are in a particular era where uh, the conversation is, and it, you know, there's so many different schools of thought on this, but body image is so important. We're trying to teach people that being healthy and a normal weight is good. Um, and not leading to severe di eating disorders like anorexia, bulimia, and, and uh, the like. But at the same time, we're talking about obesity. So how do you balance it? Because we don't want people to walk away from this conversation or listen, from th listen to this segment and say, well, every person I look at who's overweight and judge them differently about their, their lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's confusing at times, Marlene, because I also am exposed to that where I hear this whole focus upon health and being within your normal body mass index, but then you hear advertisement that fat people need love too, yeah. and um, they, <laughs> they need clothes for their fat people, and we have these fat models coming out now, and not uh, being ashamed or not being um, too conscientious of their, of their image. No? But I think it goes back to the, to the hard statistics and number. If you're obese, you will have a higher risk of having certain diseases. Okay. Now, we're also in a, at a time where people want quick fixes, and we've seen things like the gastric uh, bands, yeah. et, et cetera. What, where is the medical world in terms of dealing with some of these fixes yeah. for obesity? I, that's a very good point, my, um, William, because they are diff they have, we have tried different things. We have tried medication, we have tried this, that. Um, medication to yeah, reduce service. fat absorption through your gut. We have tried medication to increase your metabolism so you could burn more calories and more fat. Um, but unfortunately, all of them have come with side effects. Perhaps the, the most um, effective tool so far is the bariatric surgeries of the different types, the banding, the gastric bypasses, so forth. And that is now considered a cure for obesity. So I'm I think that is where we are in the medical community, that considering bariatric surgery is... From morbidly obese, though. 
Um, there are different criteria. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, by the way, we don't use the word morbid again. Mm. Okay, you know so you have to talk what is it? Stage three, stage three obesity. obesity. Thank you. So, because you offend people if you tell them they're morbid obese. But um, there are different criteria for different um, stages of obesity. But clearly, that's the move that we are working. Even the insurance companies now are accepting that you can can effectively do bariatric surgery to drop 100 pounds, 200 pounds, because at the end of the day, it will be cheaper, yeah. okay? Somebody who has come back down to their ideal weight. Now, let's not forget that uh, a key element in this uh, issue is how much we move. And obesity is very closely tied to uh, another issue that we talk about, which is how sedentary we are, yeah. which means we don't move. Um, the recommended, I think we were talking about with uh, fitness instructors, mm -hmm. is 10,000 steps a day for just regular heart health. Right. Um, that's not weight loss as yet. And I know uh, that a lot of us don't hit that mark right. on a daily basis. Yeah, there are different recommendations. Marley. I try to keep it simple. I tell people to just try minimum to exercise three times a week. 30 minutes each time. Yeah. That's not too hard to remember. And, and nobody really count their steps unless you get one of these fancy stuff. No, but all the phones have, have them now. now. Yeah. Well, if you got one fancy yeah. phone, <laughs> but if you, or if you got one smartphone, yeah. but if you, know, if you have one dumb phone, <laughs> then you can't do that. So, but <laughs> you can must remember that you, yeah. you, um, you can exercise three times, three times a week for 30 minutes. No? Yeah. Okay. So what's, what's the glimmer of hope that we have in all of this? Uh, post this discussion because I, I think that's I, what I do think we have a lot of hope I see I see behavioral changes I see culture changes I see more more um, access to to information I see more questions being asked I see the link that people are now it's not going as fast as as we would want I mean we want quick fixes all the time we want every all Belizean to become healthy um, but it will take a concerted effort from everybody not just the medical community but schools but companies and Work, I workplace workplaces and, and again I always say kudos to our utility companies. I think they always have yeah. a, a good HR structure and encouraging they encourage a lot of healthy habits. Yeah. And they have they have good programs going on um, in the utility companies. The yeah. BTL and and the Channel 5, I'm, and I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were talking about larger utility companies. And it's true, some of the bigger companies have adopted uh, these type of incentives yeah. and also uh, they give time for people to be able to, to get their exercises. I should be a little bit ashamed because I'm not, I'm not hearing much from medical associates with their employees. Um, Is this your lobby to yes, be able yes, to get yes. it now? <laughs> so but here's the thing. You know, I think the information is there. People know we need to exercise more. People have a general idea that healthier, even if we don't know exactly or what is healthy, that healthier food is better. Mm -hmm. But the behavior change that needs to come with it, the commitment to keeping to the lifestyle, and that's why they call it lifestyle right. changes, is one of the most challenging parts for people to, to really uh, embrace. Right. Um, I, and you have oftentimes people who are in life or debt situations that you have to tell them you need to change your lifestyle. What are some of the things in your practice that works, that you find as a really good incentive to people to really get on the track of a healthier lifestyle? I think how it affects their family. I think that's a bigger point than they themselves. You know, you, they would face situations where uh, things look dread, but yeah. you would tell them, listen, if you don't change, this, this, this will happen to your family, your, your, your spouse, your children. And I find that to be a bigger motivator than to just say, um, take care of yourself for your personal reason. I, I, I find that to be a better tactic to have them make that change. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I guess at the end of the day... Why don't we use religion and politics to help change? Not sure? Get the churches to insist that their congregation do exercise. Maybe the cabinet should be the, the leading exemplary body to have a, well, a workout session. We want, we want to see our ministers doing exercise before a cabinet meeting, for example. Well, I know globally, <laughs> I was talking to a friend yesterday that you're seeing some trends in the workplace change. For example, some people now have a treadmill right. in their office where 
you walk at two miles per hour while doing work just to keep up and it sounds kind of crazy but you see people doing it it's not you know it's yeah. not that hard i guess in terms of making maybe the we should go back to belize instead of city to ride more bicycles for example around yeah. town mm -hmm. get around it will solve a lot of problem mm -hmm. it will make them healthier we now have parking in belize now again and the whole the whole traffic congestion can be solved so you know what other cities are doing when it comes to bicycles so maybe that's what we can do for get another 2,000 people to ride bicycle in the city. And make small changes too. Yeah. yeah. Know. And we didn't touch on portions. Yeah, well, Robin will be high, and she yeah. is the, the guru there. Yeah, with yeah. nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what else would you like to tell people in terms of uh, why they need to take their health status when it comes to overweight and obesity serious? It's costly to, 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 to be sick. For one, um, to, to get good health care, it's, it's costly and there's always a problem there. Um, and it, it, it just helps your family, the loved ones, people who are around you. And I think that should be a bigger motivator for you to take care of yourself. Hmm. All right. Instead of eat three meat pie, you eat one meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it down. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us and uh, explaining to us some of the health risks that come along with being overweight and obese. And we hope that it's been uh, very good information for people at home. Thank you, guys, as usual. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, it's to shift topics to the manatees and uh, how much they're at risk in Belize. Stay tuned. <laughs>